Heyo everybody, Haku here with this week's Haku and a video, and of course we took off last week from the Haku and A's because I was on vacation, so it's good to be back, but it does mean we probably have a, quite a bit of comments to get through, and it's probably going to be a pretty long one. But uh, before we get into reading the comments, any news updates or anything I need to tell you about, well, we're going to be getting back into the normal schedule, which is very good. I'm really happy that I don't have to be like quadruple time and get any more to get videos out. But um, yeah, so hopefully things will work out for us to get back into the normal schedule really, really soon, because I feel like I'm almost caught up with uh, where I need to be to be on the normal schedule. But uh, pretty much for the Pokemon Black 2 Nuzlocke, I, of course I'm still doing it. I'm going to be doing it, if I can do it more than once a week, cool. Sorry, hair hanging in front of my face. But uh, if not, I'm going to be doing it at least every Sunday. So you'll at least have it once a week. That is like Sunday will be the default day. Uh, for the Boku no Hero Academia read through, I am really excited to keep reading more. It really bothered me to read the first chapter and then have to stop because I haven't had time or anything. But um, I'm going to be hopefully doing the next part this weekend, hopefully, and um, I should do at least one part every weekend, and then I, I'm hoping to do two Boku no Hero Academia videos a week. I'm hoping to do one on the weekend and then one son sometime in the middle of the week, maybe around Wednesday. So um, hopefully can do two a week and we can catch up quicker, but uh, we'll just see how things end up, I guess. Um, Sorry, adjusting there. Um, and the only thing other than that, Fear the Walking Dead. Um, the review is coming up tomorrow night, I think. Hopefully, probably. I don't know. Still trying to catch up on that one. And of course, we will, once I'm caught up, hopefully be doing reviews on Monday and um, predictions on Friday. But if there's not much to predict, I, I think I'll still do a prediction video. It just might be short if there's not much to talk about that week. So I'm uh, going to add two Fear the Walking Dead vids a week when it comes back. But either way, let's go ahead. Let's actually finally get into these comments. See what we've got here. First up is Anime Watcher. If I may ask for a favor, could you send me a list of manga slash anime that was originally adapted from a manga so that I'd have an idea of what you already read? This one, I want to talk about importantly because I have not done that yet and... I need to. I want to message it to you if you're watching Anime Watcher. And um, also I want to put it out there somewhere where everybody can see it and just know what like manga slash anime I've read slash seen. So as soon as I have time to make that list I will make it really quick and hopefully it shouldn't be much longer and then um, I'll just message it to you and then post it somewhere or another. Maybe post it on Twitter or something um, since that's like my sort of official side thing here from YouTube. Um, Elisa Jett said about uh, this season of The Walking Dead, I agree with you about Father Gabriel. I hope he stays around. And yeah, I love the show Father Gabriel. I think the actor is really good. He's really come around for me and I really, um, I really want the character to stay around and I actually want him to get like more important screen time too. I think it'd be really cool to see more of him in an important role. Uh, Gabriel Lancelot said, Luffy needs another time skip to battle against the Yonko, in my opinion, and Bomb needs to grow a beard and get bitches, yo. How exact? How does age work exactly in Tower of God? People are alive for thousands of years? Holy crap, when do they hit puberty? Um, and then um, Venersis said, they don't really explain it, but the more Shinsu you control have, the longer you live. Puberty should still be around the age of 11 to 16, but I'm not too sure. And yeah, that's the weird thing. They don't really explain it. It is sort of assumed that it's based on Shinsu control, I guess. But like, I don't know, it's really weird because there are some characters, it's like, they look really, really young and some look older and their ages don't really correspond to how they look that much. So it is, so it is kind of an odd subject. Also, I don't think Luffy needs another time skip. I don't want another time skip in One Piece, personally. I think that we just need to, uh, at least not until, like, the very, very end. If we have another time skip, let it be just at the end for an epilogue or something, like, is the common thing to do with manga. But, uh, I don't want another time skip for One Piece. The, uh, first time skip was, um, 
I don't know. I don't like the results of it enough. Like, a lot of the characters, their designs got a little bit crappier out of, after the time skip. Golden Zex said, I think the thorn is one of Enryu's. If you read on the wiki on Enryu, it will tell you that he has an attack which has multiple spear type things coming from the sky and attack the enemy. It also says it looks like blood rain, the color of the thorns also red. And Rachel said she's going to the 43rd floor for a thorn. Bomb will probably absorb or eventually absorb the thorn. I, that's possible, but I mean, I and I think most people assume that the thorn is part of the guardian. Sort of like, I don't know, sort of like we've seen with ignition weapons, they say like part of a devil or some sort of spirit or creature is forced into the item. I think that it's the whatever remainder is left of the guardian is forced into the thorn. And we still don't know what Rachel's comments mean, that she's going to get one. I think that's still something that everybody has, like, that everyone's confused about. Because I think that most people assume that the thorn was just the thorn. I don't think any of us were really expecting a second one. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm still not sure what Rachel means, that she's going to get one. Uh, Latroy's view said, hopefully Dwight lives. I think he can do some good about, um the Walking Dead comics. If Father Gabriel dies, I hope he takes a lot of the whispers out from the water tower. And yeah, I think Dwight still has a ton to do in the story. So while I said I could see him dying, I really hope he doesn't. I really hope he, like, lives, because I think he has a lot more to do. Uh, the Gaming Wolf said, like I said, I want Dwight to live, but he won't give Lucille back. But Negan did terrible things to Dwight. I don't think Negan will kill him, but if Negan gets Lucille, I hope Rick tells Dwight to give Lucille back. But Laura, I don't think so. They just killed Alpha. She wasn't too big, but Laura's still small. They need to keep her more, in my opinion. Um, yeah, good thoughts. I think Rick might tell Dwight to, but I don't know. I kind of hope that um, Negan stays as is and Dwight keeps Lucille for now, because I kind of like the way things are for now with that. Uh, Gaming Wolf also said, I think Hilltop will fall and I think Maggie and Sophia will die, but I think Beta will take Herschel. I, again, I don't know. I do think Hilltop will fall, definitely. I don't think Maggie and Sophia will die, though. I think after all this time for them to die like that, maybe Maggie, but I think either of the kids dying like this would be kind of dumb and cheesy after all this time they've been in the story. I think it would be a weaker death for them. Um, about the Boku no Hero Academia read-through, Anime Watcher said, Read the Fallen An Angels translation. It's so much better. I, sh I should have told you. It's my fault. Sorry. And don't worry. It's not your fault. Um, and whenever I re-record the next few chapters, I'm going to stick with the same one because what I read was the Fallen Angels translation. It's just that, like, the first chapter was, like, horribly, horribly translated. But when I looked at the second one, it says that they have a different translator and a different quality or proofreader and a different quality checker. So since all three of those things are different for chapter two, I'm just I'm hoping it'll improve and I'm assuming it'll probably improve because the first chat, the first few chapters of a lot of manga are like if you look at the scanlations or even sometimes the official translation, the beginnings are really um loosely translated and do have a lot of mistakes usually. Hell, even the official T Tower of God translation has a friggin' ton of mistakes, especially uh, compared to the company translation, which I personally thought was a lot more polished. Um, Carol Dixon said uh, about me discussing the future of uh, Fear the Walking Dead on the channel, Great video, I'm sorry this happened to you too. It's so unfair and good that everyone affected is talking about it to bring awareness to it. Just subscribe to your channel. Looking forward to your other videos. Hang in there. And thank you so much. Welcome aboard. And hopefully things will change for the better um, since people are bringing attention to the uh, issue with Fear the Walking Dead and things getting claimed unfairly. And um, it doesn't hurt me a ton since I don't really do YouTube for the money. I do it just like because it's what I love and what I enjoy. But it is still unfair and the thought of it is bad. And also, it doesn't really affect me that much, because if only the fear videos are getting claimed, like, all of the rest of my videos are cool. But, um, I feel like it's super unfair, like I said, especially to people that actually do YouTube for their income and stuff. So, uh, either way, 
even if I don't do Fear anymore, I will have the Walking Dead TV show and the comics videos, but uh, I still plan on doing Fear. I know my review for the uh, mid-season premiere isn't up yet, but um, yeah, I do still plan on doing it, at least two videos a week, like I said earlier. Um, Lizon NN said, what do you think of the new Tower of God chapter while I was on vacation? And I said, I haven't read it yet, lol. I'm trying not to read and then react to it and next week's chapter at the same time on Monday. And I ended up doing that. Um, Thui Truong, sorry if I cannot pronounce your name properly, said, I love Haruitsuki too, about um, one of my Fukigen no Mononoke Yen uh, playlists. And yeah, Haruitsuki is one of my favorite characters for sure. Um, Anon Forever said about the uh, final Bleach chapter, Kazui is quite mind-boggling to me. He's entered the place completely unnoticed and basically vanished. Kazui has Ichigo's tent Sazangetsu in the flame outfit, then the then possibly Kazui absorbed Jubak, the nonchalant look as he look he showed he was a Shinigami. Hmm. And yeah, I feel like it's super likely that he absorbed that tiny piece of walk that was left. And I think that like if we get a continuation in the future, and I hope we do because I think it'd be a million times more interesting than the Boruto mess that's going on right now. Um, I, th I think that a Bleach continuation with the kids would be a lot more interesting. And I think it would come into play there having the last piece of Yuak trapped within him. But I hope that Wak wouldn't be the main villain if we get a continuation because I feel like we have more than overdone Wok's character. I don't think he has much left to give as a villain. So I hope if we do get a continuation, Wok isn't the villain. Um, and and I'm forever said he clearly grabbed it as if he absorbed Wok. He even smiled when he saw it. So yeah, like I said, I think it's I think that he um, absorbed Wok. Um, I'll know it. Zero twenty fourteen. A C twenty four said, I love this wrap-up chapter about the end of Bleach, and agreed, I'm really happy it wasn't anything big or cliche, it just showed where the characters were in life, it showed their uh, relationships and stuff well, so I, I really enjoyed it. I think it was a way different feeling for me than the ending of Naruto, and the ending of Naruto was actually planned, and I absolutely hated it, but this, like, Kubo was forced to shoehorn in something in, and it still ended up being not that bad a chapter, not that bad an ending. Uh, there were a lot of bad things this arc, but the actual last chapter wasn't really bad, in my opinion. Um, an anime watcher said on the Bleach finale too, I'll probably read Bleach in the future since I heard us a quick read while binging, but before I forget, I remember two manga I was supposed to recommend to you last time, but forgot. Pandora Hearts and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 1, Phantom Blood. And yep, I'll add them both to the list because I've been wanting to read both anyway. Especially JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Like, everybody, it's really popular, everybody loves it, but I still haven't read it. And Pandora Hearts I saw a few years ago, but um, never got around to reading, but I think it looks interesting. Ghost Emblem said on the Boku no Hero Academia read through part 1, I don't know what's up with the translation, but it was like that where I read it too on the first few chapters, especially the first have terrible translations, and yeah, I get what you mean, and like I said, that, I, I, I was really getting annoyed with it when I read the first chapter, but I mean, that happens with the beginning of a lot of manga, especially with scanlations, that it's not translated that well. Um, I'll know it at zero, yeah. Dot zero twenty fourteen a slash c twenty four. Both episodes caught me off guard. They said about the um, most recent two episodes of ninety one days, and yeah, those episodes were so good. If you guys don't watch ninety one days, you are missing out. It is the best anime of the season by a long, long shot, and really one of the better anime that I feel like I've even ever seen. Um, Yuki Akimi D said, uh, videos you very good, you can listen to my music, and the yes, please subscribe. Um, I, I get what you're me you mean, and, um, thank you for the compliment. And, um, Yuki Akimi D has 10k subscribers on their music channel. Holy crap, <laughs> holy crap, guys. We're, we're moving up, 10k people watching us. Um, Onoa.0, 2014, ASOC24 said um, about the most recent Tower of God chapter. First, the fight between Ron and Indietta is a tie because both are injured in the end. Both Indietta and Ron are very strong though anyway. Um, and secondly, 
Dang, the Lopobia family's part of the Tangrate family, so they are the 10th family. Damn, they do some dirty tricks to obtain political power. I felt bad for what they did to the uh, Wolf Branch family, but it was kind of Kaiser's fault anyway. I know that falling in love's normal, but there are boundaries to it. I also kind of felt bad for Kaiser and her family, like, in spite of falling in love, she has so much regret that made the, um, wolf, that she made the wolf family exiled for such a thing, and that the family's being taxed so high as a compensation for the punishment, um, and Kaiser is trapped on the floor to pay for the debt, and the debt should be paid, but the main family's wasting it, and she's just been stuck there for a thousand years. Um, also, I don't like, sh I don't like Lilial, she's kind of bitchy, but I might like her in the future. Yeah, I love the Kaiser and Grey Wolf family stories, and I really felt for him too. And I don't know about Lilial yet. Like, right now she's at the point where I like her, but I mean, that could change. Like, I like her in the way that she's like, she's just a new character, good design, seems really interesting. There's nothing to dislike her about yet for me so far. But there's also really nothing for me to like really like her about yet either. Um, Renga Liebert said, um, Yes, I'm amazed by Kaiser's backstory and all the information given about the Lopobia and stuff. Great chapters. It only makes me feel bad again about the low chance of this being adapted into an anime. I swear it'd be an extremely successful one. Anyway, can't wait to see more. And I like the whole concept of the name hunt station. Maybe it's my twisted mind, but I'd like to see more of the implications of the craziness of the slavery created by that system. I mean, I can just imagine the owners commanding their slaves for their personal twisted reasons. Also, I'd like to see more details about how they, or about the control they have on them. I mean, what happens if a slave refuses an order? Does his or does like he or she get mind controlled against their will to follow the order? And my thoughts on that, yeah, I, about the first part, I do think that the um, popularity keeps growing, so I think an anime is more and more likely, especially where we're seeing some anime get made, even if it's just OVAs for stuff like Noblesse. I think a Tower of God anime for the future is super um, likely, but I think SIU did say before, SIU was like, I'm waiting, if they do make an anime, I'm waiting for it to be like, a really a good deal and I completely agree with that I want if we get a Tower of God anime I don't want it to just be a Tower of God anime I want a good studio to pick it up I want it to be a good deal for SIU I want it to actually turn out well so um, more than just an anime I I'm fine waiting however many years it would take for it to get an adaptation is if it gets a good adaptation you know what I mean and for the slavery stuff, I think we might see it a little bit more in depth during the auction, like when we see all the buyers and stuff, like where Jinsung is. But I don't know how much we'll actually focus on it, you know? Because, like, I don't know. It it doesn't necessarily directly relate to what the main characters are doing, so I'm not quite sure how much we'll specifically see about it. And I don't know if there's actually specific punishment for disobedient slaves or if it's just like the normal, the master would punish them or whatever. But I was thinking like if there is anything like you said, I don't know if it would be like mind control. But if there is anything like that, I was thinking maybe they would just blow apart like like blow apart for breaking the rules like the one dude who blew apart for trying to attack Kaiser without the proper clearance. So um, if anything, I think maybe that could be it. Anime Watcher said, uh, Tower of God is much more enjoyable when binging chapters. It'll be interesting to see how powerful the head of the Lopobia family is. I wonder if he's ranked somewhere in the 20s. Also, what kind of drink is any at a drinking that is able to make him faster and stronger? It's kind of weird that a drink would that ha have that type of effect on him. And yet, it's really strange to me that we have so little info on the Lopobia head, you know? Um, and like, I, I feel like he's for sure got to be ranked in the top 20 if he's like the strongest anima and stuff, and he looks incredibly hype. And we, I'm pretty sure we don't know like 17 through 20. I, I could be wrong, but I don't think we know who they are, so could potentially be one of them. Um, and then I was thinking also like for the Inietta stuff, I think maybe SIU is going for the sort of a drunken samurai theme with Inietta, because like it's a common trope in like a bunch of old samurai movies and stories and stuff. 
So that could be what we were uh, going through here. Like the one Fishman Swordsman dude from um, the Fishman Island arc in One Piece. Or I think Orin carried around the uh, jug in Final Fantasy X, which is my favorite Final Fantasy, by the way. So uh, yeah, I think it, SIU could have been going for that sort of theme. Oh yeah, and about binging chapters. I agree, I think anything's more enjoyable that way, but Tower of God is like super, super enjoyable to me week to week, which is like, it's way more enjoyable to me week to week than even, I would say Tower of God and One Piece like struggle back and forth for being my favorite manga slash manhwa, but for when it comes to week to week, I think that Tower of God is usually more enjoyable week to week. Um, cause I feel like Tower of God more than any other comic at all that I've read every single week, we get just a ton of content, like content that it could take me a lot of times, 20 minutes to do a review on. Like we get a ton for Tower of God. SIU puts in a lot of work and I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, Mike Knapp said that fight was really high detail. But I hope it ends in some sort of stalemate with each acknowledging the powers of the other or something along those lines. SIU can't get rid of Inietta yet. I'd love them to convince Inietta to come with them just so he could fight a direct line REA in Joaquin, but then gets defeated to really push how strong Joaquin is. I'm guessing that Androsi fights and defeats Lilial, um, rather, er, fights and defeats Lilial, then, possi then possibly loses to Shilial after being worn out. Kuhn will of course come up with a way to beat the Bia family and Kaiser might get involved fighting the twins or more likely even after being freed she'll still be hostile towards Bomb and the others and wanting to continue running the station because she's too far gone. She may even kill Alphine for interfering with her family and force Bomb's team to take action against her and destroy her in the station for good. And for me, like, I don't know if I want Anietta to stick around like with our team or anything, but pretty sure I talked about it in a video before where I was like, I imagine he could. He's the character I see, like, one of those that I'm like, I could see him flipping sides and joining the team. And I don't think right now, I don't think that Lilial and, Dr and Androsi will, like, be seriously fighting each other. But if they do, I think at this point Lilial will win. Because, uh, like Androsi said, Lilial's supposed to be on the 45th floor. We also know that she's ranked in the top three of her rank. And, um, SIU, SIU said in the blog this week, I think, yeah, I think it was this week's, that um, Lilial and Chilial are still a power level or power tier above our, our main characters right now, and they're going to be important in one of the next two big arcs. So we, I, it's one of those things where, like, we still have a little bit of growth and progress to go before we take them down in a few arcs. And in a few arcs, I do I do still personally think that Androsi and Anak will probably fight in a 2v2 final battle against Lilial and Chilial. But um, as for Kaiser, I think that her guilt's going to keep her loyal to the Name Hunt Station until Bomb destroys it. Because I think a lot of us right now are, again, I think most of us like fans that we talk back and forth and stuff are assuming that the Name Hunt Station will probably get, not, maybe not physically destroyed, but the slavery system's going to get destroyed. And I think until that is destroyed, Kaiser's going to be loyal to the Name Hunt Station out of her guilt. Um, but after that happens, I kind of personally think that her and Alphine will go off on their own, and maybe in Inietta, or maybe Inietta and Yukon could go with them, like sort of a, I don't know, like we've done before with Ship's team, or with um, what we did with Team Novik where I think they could be like, okay, we're kind of your friends now, we're going to leave you on okay circumstances, and we're going to go off and do our own thing. So I, I think that uh, Kaiser could take like Alphine, Inietta, and Yukon with her and then go off and do her own thing. Um, then Mike Nubs replied, I was unaware of the ranks they held. Discard that theory. I also feel like Kaiser will leave the station when it gets bought, brought down, but part of me likes the arcs in Tower of God that really show how ruthless and scary the tower can be, like when Reflejo tried to kill Bomb by committing suicide. I think it'd be awesome to see Kaiser lose it and kill Alphine for betraying her trust, and then go absolutely all out on Bomb, forcing a very close fight to the death. Yeah, I think that'd be really, really awesome too. And since we have this sort of darker character turn within the last two arcs with Bomb, 
I do feel like maybe a fight to the death could happen with Kaiser, but I just I feel like her backstory was so in depth and detailed that I think Kaiser dying this arc might just be a a little bit of a waste of a really good character. So um, while I think it would be good to have a fight to a death, I'm I don't know I'm not sure I think it would be good but I think it might be even better to uh, keep alive. Now, um, sorry if I mispronounce your name, um, Ilham Naim said, Hey Haku, just wanted to say how much I love your videos on Tower of God and how helpful they are. Quick question, who are the two people in the flashback with Ron? And thanks a ton, it really means a lot to hear that. Um, one of the people for sure in the Ron flashback was Kun Masheni Zahard, the princess who we saw talk to Yuri back at Repolista's Tower in the prologue to Volume 2 in the, um, which section was it? The, uh, Return of the Prince section. Um, so yeah, we've seen her there, and she's also the one that Ron uses her fighting style with the lightning spears, and, uh, a lot of people have predicted that Ron is actually, like, her son from before she became a princess, but, uh, I really doubt that's true, especially after the flashback. I think they're just, I think they're both mainline. I think they're both Edouan's direct children in the mainline. So, uh, yeah, one was definitely Machene, and the only one, we only kind of see the back of their head, so I still have no idea, but it does look like they're from the Kuhn family too, so it's probably just another one of, um, Edwan's children, one of their siblings or something. Or maybe, it, like, they weren't talking like it was Ron's parent, so I do think it was maybe just another one of their siblings or something. Um, it could even be the one sibling that stopped the train back at the Wooden Horse Arc that we still don't have confirmation on who it was. So it could be them. Um, and then they replied, thanks so much, and do you read or speak Korean? Where do you get the extra information about Tower of God? I learned so much from your videos about the princesses of Zahard and the Ten Great Families. Like, do you read SIU's blog in Korean, or does it get translated somewhere? And again, thank you very much. Yeah, I always love to hear that people appreciate the videos. And uh, no, I don't read or speak Korean, but SIU's blogs usually show up in English on the Tower of God Wiki or Tower of God Reddit. And for me, the Wiki is a really great source of information because it has like info from, <laughs> sorry, info from all of the blog posts and stuff like compiled pretty much in the different sections that it pertains to. So, I mean, it, it just has a lot of really good information. Um, and for me, personally, I've read the series like five to seven times, so most of what I know for my videos is from memories. But um, I do use the wiki and like stuff from the blogs that are that's on the wiki to help because there's a lot of extra info that SIU gives out, so it's definitely worth reading the blog posts because, like, I mean, we learn so much more about different characters, the families, and that's where we got all the info on those nine families that we had before and all the info on all those princesses. So we got, we get a ton in the blogs. Like even um, last week's blog, we found out that the REA is the family that cares the most about main lines and side branches and stuff like that. And this blog, we found out about um, Lilial and Chilial being important in one of the two next big arcs and that they're still a power level ahead of us. So it is a lot of good information that we get in the blogs. Um, <laughs> Chaik, or Chelk, I always struggle with the pronunciation for it, said, um, close to bomb level, we don't know how powerful bomb is at this point. It was stated that he absorbed the souls into his own power, so basically bomb should be around Joaquin level. And even before the power up, bomb should destroy Andrasi with ease. And then Mike Nub said, we haven't seen much of Andrasi or Andrasi fights recently, and I agree, I agree she's weaker than Bomb, but why do you think Bomb would destroy her with ease even before his power up? She's a freaking princess of Zahard and has Bon Bon. And yeah, like what what I said was like, um, even what I said in the review, where I was like, I think that Bomb is around the level of, maybe a little bit above, but he's around the level of Lilial, Shilial, Sachi, and Kaiser. Um, and then Andrasi, I think, is really close to that. I think she's weaker than them so that in a normal fight, sh uh, currently in a normal fight, she would lose, but I don't think she's very far behind them to where 
some training and development and I do think we're going to get more character development for her especially this arc because we still don't know what her true name is that Kaiser took so it'll be interesting when we find out her true name if we find out which of the ten families that she's actually from so I do think we have a lot of Androssi development to get and it does seem like this selfishness that she's had this arc and how everybody's trying to teach her to sort of throw the selfishness away and work as a team player. I think that um, Androssi's getting a lot of development that could lead her to being able to, like, when her and Anak team up to fight Lilio and Chilio like I think they're going to do, then she'll be able to defeat them because of the development that she's gained growing throughout this arc and maybe the next arc or two. So, uh, yeah. I, I do think that Bomb is stronger, for sure, but I think that, uh, I think Andrasi's kind of close. Um, not that far behind him. She's still around Ron level, and as we've seen, Ron is friggin' powerful. Um, and, uh, yeah, also, with, um, the soul absorption thing, I feel like, um, I don't know, I, I might be wrong on this, so just ignore me if I am wrong, but I feel like SIU said in a blog way, way back, when we were talk, it was a blog talking about um, about Albelda, and I'm pretty sure he said that the boost was only temporary. Like Bob might be able to tap into it sometime later, but he can't just at will use that power, and it didn't really add any permanent power to him. It's just sort of like a um, it was sort of a one time thing to have him beat Joaquin there. Um, it's because of like the reasons and how it wove into the story it's not really as pulley because there was sort of some establishment for it it was established that um it could happen that way but there would be side effects and repercussions so it isn't really an as pull but it was sort of a plot point used to help bomb beat joaquin there since in an ordinary fight bomb can't really handle joaquin and uh, lastly for this week, we got Mike Nemps, or actually no, I just got a notification. But um, I this the one Mike Nemps posted was right before I started recording this, so I haven't had time to reply to it in the comments yet. But um, yeah, let's let's read it. He said, um, "Damage panels are always more hype than fights for me. We get to see the effects of what's happening in the fight, where they are injured, and who may have an advantage because of it. Also the or." The REA sword skills are so awesome, Ron would probably be dead if he didn't get the support. Um, the fact of taking the attacks and counterattacking probably explains why, why Rack was able to injure any Etta so much, because his body is super tough and he probably got fed up trying to dodge, or at least made a last ditch counterattack effort that any Etta couldn't dodge. And yeah, that's really cool, I hadn't really um, thought about that, how like that sort of plays into Rack's sort of physical tank style of fighting. So, um, yeah, it, that could really be um, sort of how Rack was able to do so much damage, even though he lost. Um, and yeah, for me, I agree, damage panels are so hype. Like, I like a really good attack panel, but the damage panels, especially this chapter, were just beautiful. Like I said, the one where Inietta slumped up against the wall, and the one where um, Ron is staring at him, hunched over with the blood on his stomach and stuff, those two panels were amazing. Um, and the next paragraph he said, It's interesting seeing more princesses in the story climbing since before this Androssi was the only official one, the rest were already super-powered high rankers in a separate world, pretty much. I didn't see the Lopo Bia family being the tenth family. I thought they were just a family of dicks who got two of the regulars taken in by Zahard. And I believe Alphine meant their ability was just not that great compared to the other's powers, since she had nothing special about them compared to the other branches, which means compared to the regular people, they were just... Compared to regular people, they were special, just not the other branches that had better abilities. And yeah, it was weird the way she said it, but that's kind of what I got from it too, that they also have special abilities. They're just... They're sort of plain and boring compared to the other Lopobia branches, they didn't stick out from the other branches any. So, um, yeah. I, I'm with you on that, and I completely didn't see Lopo Bia be in the 10th family, but I, I honestly like it. I like it a lot. Like, there were a lot of reveal. like, I don't know. 
because I feel like if it was something like deep, like connected with Grace Merche Luzlek or something, like I had predicted, while that would have been really cool, I predicted it, so it would have been predictable in a way. And Lopo Bia was sort of out of left field, where not many people thought that they would be confirmed as the tenth family. So um, I I like seeing it be the Lopo Bia family. And if, it, and if they just said it was the Lopobia family, I might not like it that much. But seeing the family head and how he was like really, really hype, and seeing how it split into the 20 branches, which I think is a really awesome concept and design, that makes me really hype for Lopobia being the 10th family. And then on his uh, final paragraph, he said, uh, On the whole Andrasi power thing, I just hate people talking down, saying things like Bomb would wipe the floor with Andrasi, no contest because he's an irregular, he's got the thorn, or he's got souls now. It's like, yeah, she's weaker, but she's still a princess of Zahard, who usually become the most powerful high rankers, along with the heads of the families. So I don't see why people think she's falling so far behind, when her potential is so high for improvement. Again, she's definitely weaker than Bomb, but I don't think the gap's that wide. And yeah, same here. Like, I'm pretty sure I had laid out, like, what I thought the character power tiers were, were. Uh, like were a while back and uh, yeah I think that like Bomb, Sashi, Lulial, Shilial, Kaiser are maybe kind of around the same level and just below them but not quite are people like Inietta and Ron and Androsi and Anak who I think are a little bit weaker than say Bomb, Kaiser, Lulial, and Shilial but they are really close they're really up there and I think a lot of people too think I give Sachi too much credit, but Sachi's a strong dude. We haven't seen that much out of him, and he's been more of a support role. But Sachi's a really strong guy, so I think if we get a Sachi versus Lulu fight, it would be pretty badass to see a really good Sachi solo fight. Or um, it would be badass to see a Sachi solo fight, but even then, I'd love to see Boro Novik or uh, Rian fight again too. So uh, any way that goes, it'd be cool. So, um, yeah, Badir Productions commented was the uh, notification I just got. So let's see what they commented. Um, all right, let's see what we got. They said, is that the only, hold on, I'm just checking and making sure. Okay. Okay. Okay, he commented on, um, the Mike Nemps one from earlier and said uh, first Anak, vers Anak and Androsi versus Lilial and Jilial. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Second, as much as I want it, I don't think Kaiser will join Bomb's team, mainly because she's OP as fuck. I mean, they already have an irregular, two princesses, or one and a half, two rankers, and one of them is a princess three Ten Great Family children being Agro Agnes, Yuan, Ron, although, I'd, although I don't know if Ron will be sticking around, a top three strongest D rank being Sachi, and various other strong individuals like Hatsu. If that doesn't scream OP, I don't know what does. I believe Kaiser will go her own way, climbing up the tower or whatever, and will appear in the future, sort of like Mazano. And yep, yeah, I agree like, with what I said earlier. I think it's like, I think Kaiser will probably go off on her own, and I think there's a good chance she'll take a couple of them like Yukon and Alphine and Inietta with her. Like, that way they can stay in the story, and then way, way later on, in sort of a workshop battle type fashion, they can just come back in and be allies there, and it'd be really cool and stuff. And um, then Badir Productions also made their own comment saying, awesome live reaction. I was rereading the chapters with your vid in the background. Anyway, some questions. Was the Lopo Bia family introduced before this chapter? And now you're getting confirmation that they're part of the Ten Families, or were you introduced or were you introduced in this chapter and told in the same chapter? Um, no, Lopo Bia family. Um, I didn't know when you had started reading or anything, but Lopo Bia family was introduced in volume one with Lopo Bia Ren. Lopo Bia Ren was the main kind of main antagonist of the um, whole first volume, really. And he was an assassin that killed Anak's mother, and um, he was basically the youngest member of Zahard's Royal Enforcement Division, and he was a talented ranker from the Lopobia family. 
He was a ranker and an assassin that worked for Zahard that's the one that killed Anak's mother. So, um, yeah, we knew about the Lopobia family from him, and then Lopobia family we also knew from uh, Liliel and Chiliel that they were from the same family as Ren. And uh, way back in Volume 1, Ren specifically said, because he was trying to um, rig one of the games to take out Andrasi, and he specifically said that he wanted to take out Anak and Andrasi because there was a princess from the Bia family that was um, climbing the tower, and he wanted to take out some of their competition. So then this arc we found out it wasn't just one princess from the Bia family, but it was actually the two of them. And um, they said, and can you explain, I don't know if you want to do a separate vid on this or not, but the uh, main and branch families. I asked for this on Reddit, but I haven't got a solid response. I think it's more like the main family, the main family would be like Kuhn Edwan's children. Like, say if we're talking about the Kuhn family, Kuhn Edwan's children would be like the main branch, or the main family, but like his... Kun Edwan's like, I don't know, his son's son or his daughter's son or something would be branches. I, I guess they would all be branches because he didn't really have an heir to pass on the main title to yet since he's still alive. So I think it would be something like that, like the direct, the direct descendants of the family head or the main family and the branch families are just relatives who aren't direct descendants. Like relatives who don't have like pure Kuhn family or pure Arie family blood or something like that would be kind of like the branch families. And like we said before, it's kind of unrelated, but like Andrasi is from a branch family of one of one of the ten great families. She was adopted into it, but we don't know like which of the families she's from a branch of. So maybe when we find out her real name, this arc, if we do find out her real name, maybe that will reveal to us which of the ten families that Andrasi's from. And while I don't personally think she'll be from the Lopobia family, I think it'd be really interesting if um, Andrasi was from one of the Lopobia branches. So uh, yeah, that's the best way I can explain it, I guess. And like for the branch families, for... Um, for the way it would work, since there are specifically 20 from the Lopobia family, it would be sort of like the... Say that the uh, Lopobia family head had 20 kids. Each of those 20 kids' families are the different branches, but the family head's, like, actual strict children that are, like, with him, descended straight from him, would be main family. So... I think that's the best way to explain it. Like, it'd be easier if there was, like, the third head of the Lopobia family. Then we can say, okay, whoever's part of this guy's lineage is the main family, but his cousins and uncles and stuff are branch family. Because with only having one family head, then, like, technically everyone is sort of main family because they're all sort of descended from the head. So it is sort of a weird situation um, when it comes to Tower of God since the family heads are still all alive and they are still all, um, I don't know, they, ah, they're they all still like ruling their family. So it, it's a really weird situation honestly, but I think that's the best way I can explain it. Um, and yeah, so that's it. This was crazy long, 43 minutes, what the heck. But. I, I kind of expected it to be super long. So uh, anyway, I'm not going to hold you guys up anymore. If you have any more questions and everything like that, comment them down below. Like if you did like the video. And um, subscribe for more of everything I talked about here and a lot more. Um, follow on Twitter if you want, and I'll try to keep you updated there on stuff. And um, if I post anything important like the list of manga and stuff up there on Twitter, I'll probably just say next week in the hot Q&A that it's up there. Go check it out. So uh, don't worry about missing it if you don't follow me there. I'll just uh, I'll give you a heads up or leave a link to it or something um, if there's something important there. And um, that's it. So thank you once again for watching. And I'll see you all next time.